Occupy the roads. Give me your impression of or what your thoughts are on the Occupy movement right now. Well, I mean, my thoughts are that the government conspired against it to erase it off the map. I mean, we had every right in the world to occupy anywhere we wanted in this country. Um, and that conspiracy, I mean, it certainly it wiped out our camps. But it, you cannot, it, it's obvious that the spirit of Occupy was everywhere, and mm -hmm. worldwide, not just, mm -hmm. not just United States. Occupy means we're taking back what's uh, ours. Okay. You know? I mean, it's a movement of the people to, to recapture sanity in this country. So you were drafted, right? You no, guys, I volunteered when I was volunteered. 17 and 71. So what made you go in? Uh, economic draft, just like now. Okay, so you saw Even though there was still a, a draft. Some money. It was, uh, I was a terrible student. We were a poor family. You know, my mom raised five kids on a bank teller's job by herself. Yeah. Um, wow. So I just, I mean, 10 days after I turned 17, I volunteered for three of them. <laughs> So you have to be 17, not 18? 17. So in your 18th year. Wow. And so then where did you go? I was go? already an Army Ranger by the time I turned 18. <laughs> Were you really? Yeah. I was in the 1st and 16th Rangers of the 1st Infantry Division. Wow. About 60% of the guys in my company had just walked out of Vietnam. And because we were an infantry unit, they had come from every infantry in all of Vietnam. I mean, so they, I mean, it took like one day for them to teach me the truth about what was really going on by 71. And they, it was kind of like, they sat me down. It was one of those, you're with us or against us kind of speeches. You know, they were all resistors. They said, we're here to just tear this motherfucker You had down. no idea? You had no idea? Well, I was political. I, I had been to an anti-war march in 70 here in Baton Rouge, you know, and I saw my first Vietnam veteran against the war there. Um, he, was the, he was also the president of LSU at the time. Mm. The student body, and uh, so so I was political. I mean, but it was just that, you know, it's the same reason that it's full of people now. Even though that eleven years into a criminal occupation, they're still having no problem filling the military. And they create an economy where the only way you can get health care or an education money if you're poor is by going to the military. Actually, that's never been said before. That's probably right. Well, oh, absolutely. They, 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 everybody this everybody was, had access. They they ended the draft because of our resistance because the military was falling apart. So they just ended the draft. Period. In yeah. 73, in March, they drafted last. In, in my three years in the resistance, we ended the draft, the peace treaty was signed, Nixon resigned in disgrace as, as my personal going away president. Right at the time I got yeah. out of the, finished my three years, Nixon resigned in disgrace. And we had this great sense of victory, which is a, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the, la the, the last troops actually died in March of 75 in Vietnam. I mean, the, when the NBA finally overran. And, I mean, Saigon, and you might have seen pictures of U.S. Army just throwing helicopters into the sea so they could make room for more refugees and all that shit. I don't know if you've ever oh, seen that kind yeah. of stuff. That's how it ended. Wow. Basically, just this mountain of people trying to get out of the embassy in, in Saigon, and, and the NBA dropped in a couple of mortars and killed the last two Marines on, I think it was April 30th, 75 or something Jeez. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that was, it was the height of it. I mean, it was... Had been, it was in place when I joined the military, and I volunteered for the infantry, and I, I mean, I had volunteered for three, so I could have had any MOS, which is job type, but I mean, I just came from a long line of, I mean, my father's a famous military historian, he literally wrote the books on, really? on early United States weaponry, and I, I won top gunner in the army two wow. years in a row, and all this, I mean, they, they tried to draw me out like a sad, I mean, this wasn't just me too, this was, Four gunners from the same platoon, we all deserted together the first time. This wasn't just, we can't take it. We're, we said, fuck you, we're leaving. And we just went and got an apartment in another city. Yeah. The complete units were refusing orders to yeah. even go to go into battle. They, they wouldn't. I, I was a great soldier, actually, which I said yeah. it was well documented. Um, and then my second court martial, all the combat vet sergeants wrote positive statements. They said, you know, they basically just said these fuckers are trumping the charges up to fuck with Riley. You know, they they were trying to get me, and uh, 
They put a CID agent in the room next to mine That's and tried CID. to oh. criminal investigation division. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the 46th day of our desertion, 11 CIDs and MPIs kicked in our door at 6 in the morning and arrested us and took us back to the Army. But we knew. I mean, we did it as a political statement. We, <laughs> we, we were just going to not be there. And that's why a lot of the, the early organizers in the anti-war movement that I'm talking about now had roots in this type of thing. I mean, Dave, the late, great Dave Klein, I don't know if you ever heard of him. He was Bill Perry and my best friend and a couple of other people that are still alive. But, uh, Dave Klein is the guy that they made Platoon about. I don't know if you ever heard of the movie oh, Platoon. Platoon. He's actually the guy that was the guy oh. that got shot three times. Well, my best friend Dave got shot three times over there and became an incredible anti-war activist when he got back after getting shot the third time. And it's the kind of shit that those guys did that made the GI resistance to the military mm. spread worldwide. I mean, by the time I got in, it, I, it was just incidental. I was already a little radical. I mean, I, I'm from the south side of Chicago. Right? Oh. So my father left my mom with five kids and no job. So overnight, we go from the south side of Chicago to fucking south Louisiana. I mean, when I moved here, the, the gas station still had coloreds only and whites only on the bathrooms oh and the water fountains. And I just come from the south side of Chicago, and I'm like in fucking culture shock. You know, I mean, a radical yeah. activist is born. I say, what the fuck is this shit? You know? Yeah. Um, How do you let people know what's going on and that they believe it? Well, uh, right now, the best tool we have is shit like Facebook, believe it or not. I mean, yeah. this is the best activism tool ever invented yeah. because Absolutely. there's one billion people using it. Yeah. And even though we're limited to 5,000 friends each or whatever, it's instant truth, you know, I mean, even though it's an enemy organization, I mean, there are a bunch of fucking neocons that own it, but we're using yeah. it against them. I mean, all, that's all we can do is independent media, using the free internet right. to spread truth. The, the one thing we have different now that we never had before was being able to instantly share the truth. I mean, even in, during Vietnam, we were relying on mimeograph machines and underground army newspapers right. to tell our little stories, and, get, and they threatened us with jail just for even having underground newspapers. So, of course, we all made them, you know. You know I mean, that's, that was the whole True thing. activists right here. Them, you know? <laughs> all I'll we need is Bill Perry in the room. Awesome. We... I mean, we lived in armored personnel carriers and everything, steel and metal and weapons and, um, you know, but just the oppression of the system was it. I mean, it was basically a war between the lifers and the, and the men, you know. And it was a constant war. I mean, they were trying to put you in prison, you know. I mean, yeah. they, they, we were saying fuck you to everything they said. Literally, fuck you, sir. I mean, it, it was a game. I mean, if, if they sent one senior NCO or, or an officer into an area to give you a direct order, say, out in the field, and he was by himself, we'd say, fuck you, we ain't doing shit. So he'd run off and get another officer to come back with a witness, because that's how the military is. They, oh. You can't believe anything. And he'd come back and give you the same order. <laughs> oh, sure. No, sir. No problem, sir. Yes, sir. Why did you say so, sir? You know? Just to fuck with them. We did so yeah. much shit. We had stupid shit like we all started wearing tie dye t shirts under our fatigue shirts just because they stick out, you know. And so, what do they do? They pass a reg to make them illegal. You can't wear it. So, what, so what do we do the next morning? My entire platoon falls out with just tie dye t shirts. Oh we God. said, Fuck you, motherfucker. That's you know, good. You know, what are they going to do? They, they, oh. it, it was a wild military, you know, and they had ways of fucking with you. Yeah, I mean, I say. You know, I wonder also how much that could you. happens now in this. Um, well, we've tried to nurture a GI resistance just like we had. I mean, we actually, I mean, like being with IBAW when they started, it's just not the same, man. Because what, the one thing they don't have that we had is that the roots of the draft was the roots of resistance. I mean, one day you're sitting around this table getting high, and the next day you're literally killing people in Vietnam. Whereas now they say, oh, you all volunteered, so you knew what you were getting into. And, and it's, an, it's a great argument, you know. But but what kid knows the reality of the military or criminal occupation yeah. until after he's a part of it? You know, it's too late. Yeah. You know, I, know. I can. Sh I'm yeah. friends with literally thousands of guys that have been there that are all against it now and speak out yeah. proudly against it. I mean, and every one of us would defend this country. I mean, you know, if Saddam Hussein actually had come down Kimbrough Drive, you know, yeah. I'd be out there with my fucking carbine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not. We're not pacifists. No, it was a group effort. I mean. There were certainly massive protests here in the streets, and 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 actually, GIs came home and melted into the civilian anti-war movement. Unlike Vietnam veterans against the war, I mean, their their big thing was 
guys that had been in the military all over the world during Vietnam, and they mm -hmm. came home radicalized. Yeah. And when when they gave they gave legitimacy to mm -hmm. to anti-war yeah. demonstrations. I mean, when the very people that are there, you yeah. know, they Nixon, do, you know, you, yeah. you've heard of Cointelpro. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, you know, Nixon would intentionally ingest a few of their own people and burn flags and say "fuck America" and get it mm -hmm. all on film and make sure that's what was on oh. the news that yeah. night. Right. Turn the country against you know, crazy yeah. hippies, but all of a sudden, when the very guys that were in battle yeah. came home and saying this war is completely wrong, we're yeah. killing innocent people, and uh -huh. those presidents, and, and it was all in conjunction with my good friend Daniel Ellsberg releasing the Pentagon Papers, which showed that president after president lied about what the fuck we were doing in Vietnam yeah. and but, yo, completely you, lying to the people and it shocked the country. Mm -hmm. it, it was a whole group of little things that all happened. Yeah. But there's a movie called Sir No Sir. I watched it. That's well, exactly what it is. Well, Dave Klein, again, my, my best friend, is one of the guys in Sir No Sir, and yeah. it's probably the best documentation of the real, yeah. what was really going on. And, and, of course, Bill Perry and I, um, and Dave Klein, and you know, very few others, um, were there to help the Iraq vets. I mean, mm -hmm. they started Iraq veterans against the war. I can... I was the only non-Iraq vet invited to sit in on their first meetings at yeah. Fort Bragg. I mean, I have pictures of that too, their very first Iraq Veterans Against the War meeting. Mm -hmm. And I was in there shooting pictures. We started before we ever invaded. That's my whole point. We had built an entire anti-war movement before yeah. we had, We invaded Iraq March 19, 2003. Uh, February 15, 2003, in Wikipedia. I was one of the organizers wow. of this. Between 6 and 10 million people took part on that day in 60 wow. countries to say, please don't invade Iraq. Uh, yeah. We had a giant forum here at LSU, uh, sponsored by LSU. We filled the largest building on the campus outside of a sports stadium, which was the Cox Communication Center, to standing room only. We had an even debate with a bunch of ex-officers and ROTC that they were for invading Iraq and against four, myself and three other, a state senator who was against it. We had a big public forum and then we just debated it all evening at LSU and this was, this was before, this was right at the time of this protest and, and at the end of the thing, 73% of the people in the audience said we shouldn't invade Iraq. You know, I mean, if they'd have done this all over the country, it, would have been, it, it might have been prevented, you yes. see, but... But anyway, so on February 15th, we'd already had a bunch of demonstrations before then, almost nine months worth. But this was six weeks before we invaded, well, five weeks before we invaded. And we actually got 10 million people documented wow. to protest this in the street. So that there was a million in Washington and New York. And, and we had, I mean, the, the press suppressed it. The media suppressed it. I mean, you cannot find one article no, about no. About a half a million. I mean, we, we, we did a protest on, we put 600,000 people on the street in Washington, D.C. on September 24, 2005. I mean, I, I have my own personal pictures. There it is, 600,000. My point being, there wasn't one story. I mean, the Washington Post carried one yeah. local newspaper story about it, but not CBS, NBC, ABC. They didn't even, they stifled wow. the movement. I just don't know they why. infiltrated all yeah. the anti war groups right off the bat with cops. Um, monitor, started monitoring everybody right off the bat. I mean, they just stifled the sense. It, it, mm. it was part of the plan, and you know, they were not going to be stopped. Yeah. I mean, 10 million people simultaneously in the streets demanding don't invade yeah. Iraq before it ever got invaded. And yeah. They just said, fuck me, we got, we got yeah. the intention of not invading Iraq. Hey. They lied about everything. WMDs, they sold it just like a program. I know. And the people bought it because they were brainwashed. Bunch of brainwashed people. Yeah, <laughs> it's sad to watch, uh, isn't it? I mean, it is. MSM's telling you, you yeah. gotta fucking believe it. Yeah. It's amazing that more than $800 billion can be spent on defense, and yet we have more people dying of suicide nowadays, more soldiers dying of suicide yeah. than die in the war. Combat. Yeah. That tells you the nature of criminal occupation. Yeah. And you grow up in the land of John Wayne mm -hmm. to defend the red, white, and blue, but then you get sent over to a foreign country and all you end up, you can't lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is oppressing women and children and yeah. poor minorities and poor people in general. It doesn't even have to be a minority, they don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. It's all about money. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about making war profits because there's no oversight in war profits. You know, they were selling 
they were, you know, using a million gallons of fuel a day, and they were paying two dollars and fifty cents a gallon exactly. to put it in the vehicles. And yeah. Halliburton was getting two hundred and fifty dollars per meal to supply exactly. rotten food to Marines three yeah. times a day. Well, and then they get, then no they got to rebuild there. the cities after they. Oh yeah, bombed. of course, it's a perfect. Perfect program. Yeah. They they took one of the most historical, sublime cities in the world and destroyed it. I mean, they had the museum. They looted the museums and blew up the hospitals first thing and it killed, yeah. knocked their electricity. They still don't have electricity. I mean, right. people bitching about Sandy and Katrina right yeah, here, less which, than they did before which affected started. us. Imagine that for nine straight years, <laughs> yeah. except without the bombs and the bullets. You know. Yeah. I mean. Anytime yeah. someone tells me how bad it is because they lost their power, I mean, I feel for everybody, and we've had it hard here. I mean, we, I mean, yeah. the shit we did for Katrina relief was phenomenal. But reform government, like any congressman that votes to send us war, has to put on an infantry uniform and go, go. fight the war. Okay, That's what I said. end of war. Yeah, you know, but none of them fuckers are going to fracking do it. starts in you know, their George backyard Washington first. George Washington was in the field with his <laughs> men, and even in the Civil War, yeah, like the congressmen were good. in the field with their men. So, okay, you want to go to war, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be on kid. point. You're I'll be right behind you. You'll be you know? right I'll there I'll be with right, you, buddy. I got That's right true. behind you. Sweet. You know, so. Money reform, obviously. Uh, the biggest failure in this country is that box in there, that television. Yeah. That's what. If that box ever becomes our friend, the way it's our enemy, okay. we could actually reform this country. I mean, if they start saying George Bush and Dick Cheney are war criminals on Monday, by Friday, this entire country would be saying they're war criminals. They need yes. to go to jail. Yes. I mean, we have to recapture the failed free have, press. Well, so you want to know where the media fell apart and how we get it back? Under Reagan, they deregulated the media. There were media laws until 92 where one man couldn't own more than one television station, two radio stations, oh, and one newspaper. Oh, Keeps it from consolidating. As soon as they deregulated, war criminals like Rupert Murdoch could buy 2,500 media outlets, start telling his people what the story was going to be every day, and best of journalism died yeah. completely. The heard... point is, a very few... The very same people that own the war machine own the media. Okay. So you have so, to re-regulate the media. You wouldn't believe the hell. And so there has to be to some criteria. radio station in Baton Rouge. It's hell. I mean, you go through the FCC, there's so many regulations. So why aren't we getting behind that to make well, them or force them? Well, to, to me, it's just the intelligent thing to do, and it is a daunting task because the same war machine owns the media. Right, this is the problem. Well, the yeah. problem that's is what they all made of everything. I mean, they just even made public it. television has become the Pentagon broadcasting system. All they do is parrot exactly what's on the MSN, but there except must, with longer stories. Well, I, we have to be able to well, do we, something. What we have to do is have the young people of this country use their heads and stand up on the street and demand these reforms. But you have to have concrete ideas, and the failure of the media. I mean, it's in the First Amendment to the Constitution, the free press. I mean, the one thing yeah. those slave owners realized was that free press was critical, critical. if there was going to be a democratic process. Because truth in, and we have the free press here right now. We have our own free press. Right, right. But we have to get rid of but that how one. But 90% reach? of the people. Right. Another re thing of reform is you want to get the country's attention, really? As soon as you go to a war, all sports ends. Yes. No more sports. Oh, Fuck I love sports. it. I mean, I'm serious. I, mean, I was going to design serious. the war around you know, sports. If, so if, we, if there's, gonna be, if there's a war field. worth fighting, oh. then games end. Fuck all this pleasure on Saturday night while we got guys getting killed or killing right. people anywhere else in the world. I love it. Okay. Now, you, there's 100,000 people in every football stadium in this country every Saturday night. And if you ended that, they would fucking get involved like you wouldn't believe. I mean, there's a concrete idea. I mean, these are radical reforms. I agree, reforms, because you know? I said, man, you, you guys embraced the political corruptness like you do football. Oh, we would not exactly. be in this problem. I mean, we, we put together a march and get 500 people because we invaded in this country. And then that yeah. Saturday night, there's 105,000 people in Tiger yes, Stadium watching the most violent sport in the world. Yeah. You know? in the box track. Well, that's a good question. I mean, that's a tough question. There I mean, has to be by, some legal aspect that they well, have to... I mean, there's a way any... Just the same way they... You run, we have to run counter propaganda first of all. I mean, that's what I do. I, I, I run a counter propaganda yeah. on Facebook. I mean, I just I, that's my whole mission in life, you know. And, <laughs> and I share it, and I have like four thousand of the most hardcore activists all over the world, you know. Yeah. And, and so that's one way. I mean, you, you start countering their bullshit with the truth. Yeah. I mean, right. it, but it's not a. I don't know. I mean, how how we get it to our our, our Congress and government is so corrupt.
I mean, the Supreme right. Court is the not so Supreme Court. I mean, how, they're the ones that are allowing this. Or you know, you repeal the Patriot Act. That's one. Of, I mean, that erased the Constitution. I mean, I was doing mm -hmm. lectures on that, like within two weeks after they did it. Mm -hmm. I actually got it and read it. It's this 400-page ridiculous document that nullifies five of the Bill of Rights. They didn't wow. just erase those. Right off the bat, you got to repeal the Patriot Act. Yeah. I don't even know if you, you know. I, if do, our constitution is even valid, do you I think mean, they should be yeah. a constitutional uh, convention? Um, I have friends that are heavily involved in that movement, and that is one way to okay. attack it. But it's again, it's a tedious, I know. incredibly slow process to, to actually get to. It's never been done. I know. Never it's, it, it, it's there. But then, in would theory, it open up a flip? It's not like an open. Obviously, it's, activism is a. It's a it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And this country is full of sprinters. You know, everybody's into instant gratification. You know, I'm not, you know. No, but I'm I want. I want. I don't. I, don't I want to stereotype. I'll keep my multi 2.0, right? I want. Activism they said is a marathon, yeah. and you do have to have. You know, we, we, had, we had a strategy in, during Vietnam, and we won. It's one of the most effective, actual, organized activism events that happened in the United States history. I mean. We, we all knew what the problem was, we hit it from the inside, we hit it from the outside, and we ended it. You know, we ended but isn't form that sad? A nation, I mean, you ha it's got to start with education. I mean, our kids are, have been going to prison now for 25 years. They haven't been going to school. They go through metal detectors, police dog searches, zero tolerance. I mean, what kind of a society would have a zero tolerance? I mean, yeah. you're, you're, they instill fear from the beginning. So all mm -hmm. that, and that, that's on another level. I mean, that's one of the planks you have to have. Yeah. Complete reform of education. Yes. I mean, the kids got to go play. They got to learn common sense. You know, we have to, have, you know, you yeah. teach them how to grow food you know, yeah. and, and go fishing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, fuck all this yeah. going through metal detectors and getting searched Don't even get from the time they're five education. years old. I know. It's because like, I mean, they've had so bad. kids locked, put in handcuffs that are six years old for going like this. And, mm -hmm. and that's how crazy this country is. I mean, there's so many levels of reform. But it starts with breaking down the military. We have, we, you know, if we're, we have capitalism, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's an obvious fact. So if we're going to have any form of basis of capitalism where it takes barter in this country, then it's got to be able to, the, the, the lowest end of it has got to at least have enough to subside. You know, you, so until every man has a house, food, mm -hmm. health care, then there shouldn't be any rich. Right. There shouldn't be anybody that has a dollar more than they fucking need to survive. Mm -hmm. I mean, until it balances out, you know what I mean? Well, I argue, and this is what I've heard them say, well, if somebody builds a great, a really great company, they should be entitled to whatever it makes. But how well, do you say, well... That's, that's pure capitalism. You know, doggy dog. What do the, what do they do with the most successful successful capitalist country in the world? AT and T. They broke it up. They became so powerful that they had no competition. The government actually broke them up. And I why mean, can't we hold corporations accountable? Like well, this is and, and the problem. They wouldn't be as powerful if we held them well, accountable and and well, and, and that's outed them. else that changed the, the rules of capitalism here in the heart of capitalism. The com the companies that used to build shit at least we're here. So at least the people that live here benefited from mm -hmm. the system of capitalism. The jobs were here, right. you know. And, but w when they opened up this great world trade, right. guess what? Mm -hmm. What that really means is we're going to fuck, fuck paying mm -hmm. a guy 20 bucks an hour when we can go get a slave to do it in China for five mm -hmm. cents a day. And so that's where it's on balance. You see, this, the very same people that made their wealth in this country and are still making, they, they don't produce here anymore. They just sell here. And they've turned this into a country of service industry. I mean, you know, if you keep your nose clean in America and get your degree, maybe you can be an assistant manager at McDonald's, you know. <laughs> you know, know. And, and that's, you know, <laughs> and that's to discount, you know, there's 2.5 million people in prison. And that, that, that's not the same people now. That means every day, one 365th of those people go out into society to never have a chance again, and another one 365th yeah. goes in. You know, yeah. this isn't the same 2.5 million I people. Know. This is a rotating system of yeah. guaranteed slavery. Because yeah. the people that come out of fucking prison are never going to have a chance. I mean, the best they have to look for is minimum wage, and we've created a society that you cannot possibly survive on minimum right. wage. So, and they keep drugs and things like that illegal, so what? where do they go? Yeah. They got go to go any so many place people. they can to make yeah. money. I mean, yeah. you know, legalized drugs, illegal drugs disappear instantly. Yeah. All the pain and misery. You know, if you want to be a fucking heroin addict, great. Go to Register, license, and let the government. They can give you a pickup truck full of the shit for ten dollars. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, you want to be a crackhead? Well, great. Go yeah. register with. We'll yeah. give you a crack. You don't have to rob ten people a day to feed your habit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a health problem. I'm not advocating <laughs> drugs, but I'm. No. It's ridiculous you, yeah. that all drugs aren't legal. I know. You know? It's, it's, it's how they perpetuate the prison system. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the prison system is one of the most successful corporations in the world because they can't compete because they got free labor. He said, if they had put me on a farm where I could go and do something with my hands and, and be productive, you know, to pay back to society. But they didn't. They put him in jail and he learned to be a true criminal then. You know, there's, there's systems yeah. existing in white society that work all over the world. I mean, some countries have systems where they actually rehabilitate people that have problems. You know, if you break a law, they slap you on the wrist, don't break the law again, and train you how to do something. The Germans have the most incredible transit system in the world. I mean, there's, there's systems so in place around this world. The yeah. Canadians have socialized health care. I mean, there are intelligent things in place in Western you know, society yeah. that work, that we can implement right. if it wasn't for greed. Right. Know? And that is the question, because as long as there's money, it's greed. Well, because okay. we had it in the movement. And, and, and what's wrong with the cow? Well, what man needs more than $5 million, for example? Minimum. Okay. Donald you make $5 Trump. million, dollars, uh, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Yeah. Romney, yeah. you're, Maximum out. you're out of the capitalism game. You take your fucking $5 million mm -hmm. and go enjoy the shit out of your life, but you ain't making another penny. Good luck, you know, if you, if you blow it all. But somebody will say that's communism. Cause well, that's because this country's brainwashed and gets you back to that. TV. I know. Well, I started with McCarthyism, you know, a literal witch hunt for communists, you know. Yes. A Hollywood. Politics, business. Yeah, they were plucking they people tie, out. They were literally red, ruining people's lives yep. because you might have had a communist sit in your house, you know. And that's the exact opposite of what the theory of this country I is. What's wrong with a personal cap on wealth? You know, right. I mean, tell tell any person that's been in any occupy if they'd be happy with five million dollars for the rest of their life, and that's just an arbitrary <laughs> number. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, why does Bill Gates need sixty billion? And yeah. why does I know they, I just know, saw the top. It's I don't care how generous they are, you know, picking and choosing what they give yeah. back. But if you're gonna have capitalism, then yeah. make it a plain, fair playing field, you know. Yeah. I mean the Rockefellers didn't earn theirs, the Kennedys didn't earn yeah. theirs. I mean, you know, uh, the people that started with the mass fortunes when this country started, land was free. We love the potential of what this country could be because it's so obvious. We hate what it's become. An Occupy the Roads production. Hollywood yeah. is huge in psychological warfare. Yeah. You never so know strange. what's true and what's not true. Yeah. Well, if you see it on the MSN, you can pretty much guarantee it's not true. Or, or if you're seeing it, you're seeing it for a very specific... Awesome. So anyway, they, uh, they showed what's footage of the Assad in Syria. He's got two places where he stores the component for sarin gas. And now we, they, they showed this footage saying, oh, we now have proof that they're moving the two components together to use against their people. Uh, you know, the, the same WMD yeah. lie they gave us to I just post that uh, for Facebook Iraq. I mean, you know, it's like yeah. literally the same, yeah. they might even use the same fucking footage, you know. I mean, who, who knows, you know. I mean, it's like, yeah. here, here, <laughs> you're supposed to look at this satellite photo and, you know, they're saying, yes, this is his, where he stores one component of sarin gas and here's the other one. And we now have proof that there's activity there and the only reason, you know, it's they're selling the same shit and that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. We're... We do not want to go to war with Syria or uh, in Iran is the big prize, of course. But they, you know, and, and it's not even so much that they want to go to war as they want to keep the fear going because fear is money. I mean, mm -hmm. we got to keep supply. You know, we just gave Israel yeah, permission exactly. to yeah. blow the fuck out of Gaza again. Exactly. But, you know, that means somebody made a couple military. of billion in profits. You know, now we got to restock, you know, and hey, we just killed a few brown people. They ain't real people. And you got to you know? really restock. Fuck it, you know? Thanks, Ward.